What's up everyone? I'm Matthew Toussaint, an instructor with the SANS Institute and an author of the brand new SEC 460 Vulnerability Assessment for Your Enterprise course. I'm actually here today to talk about certification exams, specifically GIAC certification exams, the ones that come with many of those SANS courses. Now in our experience as instructors, well, one of the questions we get asked most frequently is, well, study tips for the exams. We like to recommend a process called indexing, and you'll see exactly why that works and why that's important here in just a moment. We're going to go through the process of indexing and what to decide to put in your index, as well as kind of my recommended method and a brand new tool that I just put together to help you build those indexes. Now the reason why, well, this whole process is necessary is because in our community, information security, certifications are one of the major primary ways by which we demonstrate to a prospective employer or others in the community exactly what kind of skills and capabilities we bring to the table. GX certifications are open book, but time limited, kind of like the real world. The difficulty with these exams, of course, is, well, the associated SANS course can have a lot of material. This is the 660 SANS course. The reason we recommend indexing is because in a time-limited exam, you just don't have the opportunity, the time, to be able to look up the questions and learn the material in the middle of the exam. An index can be your gateway, your helper, to get you through the course material and present you with the, relative, the relevant information inside the books right off the bat. This is an index I put together for the 660 course. I like to make these indexes alphabetical. This means that when I'm looking for something, we can jump to the right reference and find it very quickly. I took the SANS Master's program as well, and in the SANS Master's program, you end up with a host of certs, and in my case, a ton of different indexes. This index here is an index for the GSE exam, the GX Security Expert. Essentially, it's the culmination of well, SANS. And as a result, it's much bigger. An amalgamation of three separate courses, SEC 401, 504, and 503. In this index, it's got a clear cover on the front, so you can see you know, what book it is you've picked up when you pick up the index. And it also has a clear cover on the back, where you can put some kind of information or material that might be highly relevant for you to reference over the course of the examination. The goal, again, with these indexes is to be able to jump to relevant material as quickly as possible. So if we have a clear cover on the back, we can simply flip the book over and find the relevant material. Perhaps it's one of the SANS cheat sheets, or perhaps even a cheat sheet that you yourself have created to help you with information you expect to see quite often on a given exam. So in this case, there's a clear cover on both sides of this index. With other indexes, however, you might not have information that you really need to jump to regularly throughout the exam. In those cases, I tend to recommend a hardcover uh, cheat sheet here or cover on the back because these tend to be a bit more robust, a little more rigid, and might keep the life expectancy of your index going a little bit longer because these can be useful reference materials. In the future, if you ever need to dive back into your books to answer a question that comes up while well, you're on the line at work. Now, a tool that I built to help make these indexes you know, ones that look a little bit like this and give you the opportunity to jump to portions of the material as quickly as possible during the exam is called Voltaire. Voltaire is a web application that can be found at https colon slash slash voltaire.publickey.io. What it does is it gives you the opportunity to build yourself an index and it stores them online for you as well. So go ahead and log in. It uses Google authentication in order to perform the login. Here, log into my Google account. And we're logged in. As you can see, there's a couple indexes that I already have stored here. But if I'd like to make a new one, in this case, we're going to build an index for the SEC 460 class. SEC 460. And we click on Create New Index. And now we have a new index. If we click Edit here, this will allow us to begin to add new items to our index. Let's say we're going through the 460 course materials. And on page three, we see something about vulnerability assessment. So just call this VS. That was on page three of book one. 
and then it would probably say something about vulnerability assessments and what vulnerability assessment is. We'll just put a dot here for now. We click add row, it adds a new row here to the spreadsheet right below it. Now we can click into different items here in the spreadsheet if we wanted to edit them in the future. So let's say we're going through the course while it's being taught, we're adding in a little of these titles and the page numbers. We want to spend the time to pay attention to the uh, actual course delivery. So after the fact, we can maybe go back in, go to the page number, and add in more information. Say, vulnerability assessment is the process for, and so on. And we can do that as well. It's just that simple to create an index. So as you go through all of the portions of the books, this will create an index for you. We could also simply import existing material as an index. So if the edit process isn't the way you would prefer to write an index or keep track of the material, you don't like the web interface, that's perfectly fine. You can do something like Microsoft Excel here in order to create yourself an index. This is an index that I created for the SEC 660 exploitation class before I actually wrote this tool. And I wrote the index here in Excel. Now, if we would like to create an index with something like Excel and import it into Voltaire so that we can make something better than a spreadsheet for us to use during the examination, we can do that as well. We have to export it to CSV here. Now, one thing to note about a CSV is that it's comma separated. So if when making the index, we created description fields or title fields or whatever it might be that included a comma, we'll need to remove those. So we hit Control F, for bind, go to replace, and replace all commas with blank. Replace all, and this makes a bunch of replacements. You can close that, and all commas that are in the document itself have been removed. Now we can save this, and now we've got a comma separated index. If we go to where that file is located, and we open it with some kind of word processor, a simple one like Notepad here will do. Control A to copy all that material. And if we go to create new index, let's call this one new 660. When we edit this index, we can import CSV and we can paste that information right here. Now when we click import, it'll automatically import all of that information to publickey.io. And then now we can see that all loaded right here. Now we've got a fairly large index. We'd like to export this index to Microsoft Word in order to finalize the creation of this. We can do that as well using the export button in the top right hand corner. So we click export, go to new 660, and then click build index. This will build ourselves a fully sorted by alphabetical index with book number, page number, and so on. We need to control A here as well to select all of that. And now we can open it up in a word processor like Microsoft Word. Let's open up a new document here and paste that information in. Now you notice some of the formatting came with it. So we just go ahead and delete this part right there. And then you'll notice there's still some more formatting here. These page break tags. The reason the page breaks are there is because it's likely that we're going to want to add a new page after each one of the pages of the index that we've created. So if we highlight that and control F, that will find, we'll go to replace here, and we can replace that with a character for new page in Microsoft Word. That'll be a caret M, replace all of those makes the replacements, close that. And now we can see we have an individual page for each one of the portions of our index. Let's undo that real quickly first though. We go back, we have our original index again. If we highlight all of this information, we can also sort these into columns. If we go to the layout tab, under columns, we can select two columns. This allows us to get more information on the same number of pages. When taking the exam, this can be vital to us because it allows us to see more for each page that we turn, which means we'll have to turn fewer pages, which makes us quicker and more effective when searching for information in our books during the examination. 
Now that we've got everything sorted into columns, we can do that find and replace one more time here. Replace this with that caret M, replace all, and now we essentially have our index. It's a good idea now to add maybe a title page to the index, or perhaps go to the very end of the index and add some appendices to the very bottom. Whatever information it is that you'd like to have included in your index when we move to the binding phase, now is the time to add it. Next, let's save this. Save as. Call this sec 660. Index. Saved. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step is binding. It's a good idea not to go into an exam with a bunch of loose leaf paper because eventually all of our sorted alphabetically information is going to disappear and we'll lose it over the course of a multi-hour exam. So it's a good idea to come up with some way to bind them. Paper clips also tend to come loose or tear paper. So I tend to recommend that it, you try to attempt to get it actually bound, some kind of spiral ring. Any office supply store most likely has the equipment there and available for you to be able to do this. In my experience, if you go to the office supply store and have them print all the paper for you, so it's their ink, it's their paper, and in the same office supply store, you have them bind your index and insert those alphabetical tabs, which they most likely sell as well. The whole process tends to cost about 15 bucks. And when the exam itself is $900 when bundled to the class or $2,000 if you challenge it, that's a pretty darn good deal. Now that the index has been bound, it's off to the races. It's time to go take that test and earn those certs. Good luck. I'm planning to post a lot more videos here in the future. So let me know if you like this one. And if you'd like to be notified when I put out new videos, subscribe. As always, happy hacking.